Burger King is being sued because the Whoppers aren't Whopper enough. Astronomers are hopeful that the aliens are going to respond to a message they sent 40 years ago. And studies show drinking alcohol does not actually result in, quote, beer goggles. These are the weird stories for Wednesday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast in the cosmos. Burger King is facing a lawsuit that claims its Whoppers are not Whopper enough. A U.S. judge rejected Burger King's bid to dismiss this lawsuit that claimed it was cheating its hungry customers by making its Whopper sandwich appear larger than it actually is. Do you mean in the photo it looks larger than it actually is? It's hard to tell in a photo how large anything is. Because it's taken out of context. If you put another item in the photo, like if they put a golf ball next to the Whopper, then you can tell. Well, you know, it looks like it's ten times the size of that golf ball. But because there's no other objects in the photo, I don't know how you can make this claim. But apparently a judge is allowing it to go through. It's Judge Roy Altman in Florida who said Burger King must defend against the claim that its depiction of Whoppers on in-store menu boards mislead reasonable customers, which amounts to a breach of, of contract. Seems strange to me that the crux of the lawsuit is that Burger King's burger, or the Whopper isn't as large in the picture. There's other aspects of the photo that I would attack it. For instance, the the lettuce looks fresh in the photo. I, I never get fresh lettuce in the Whopper, man. That tomato looks ripe and juicy. And the tomato never looks like that in the Whopper, man. It's, there's other aspects of the depiction of the Whoppers that I think you can attack them on. I don't know about the size. I mean, they're, they're never as big as the photo. We just kind of accepted that over the years. You think the Big Mac is very big? It's not big. But, I mean, these fast food companies are going to just continue to be sued because they have adjectives in their titles. When you put Whopper in there, Big, Big Mac, people are just, are just going to file a lawsuit. You've got to just make it very simple. Pretty soon the menu is going to be food number one, food number two. I like to order food number two, food number two, please. Now, it says there's multiple customers in this proposed class action suit who accuse Burger King of portraying burgers with ingredients that, quote, overflow over the bun, (laughs) making it appear that the burgers are 35 percent larger and contain more than double the meat as the chain actually serves. I don't know where they came up with this 35 percent larger. Wow. They just employed some physicists to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, I know you guys are usually working on quarks, but can you get over here and tell us um, what the percentage of overflow of the bun is in this photo of a Whopper, please? (laughs) All these people are dumb, man. The food never looks like the pictures. It never looks like the commercials. Advertisement is portraying a fantasy world where everything's amazing, in case you're not hip to that. I mean, if we were going to actually have advertisements that portray real life, no one would buy the shit. They just wouldn't because it's all crap. <laughs> Life isn't happy. You know, Bud Light doesn't taste that good that it makes you want to, I don't know, party like that. It doesn't make you. The people that I know that drink low quality beer, they don't live that lifestyle that Bud Light shows you that is going on. It's what they portray. Advertisement is one big lie. Is everybody aware of that? I know I'm going on a rant here, but it's true. It's true. Uh, You know, it's a fantasy, man. It's a fantasy. You see celebrities pushing low-quality products as though they use them in their actual life. You know this is not going on, right? You know LeBron James doesn't drive a Kia Soul. Are we all aware that advertisement is one big lie? Burger King countered that it... They're saying that they are not required to deliver burgers that look, quote, exactly like the picture. But the judge says it's up to the jurors to tell us what reasonable people think about this. Well, I hope the jurors come up with all these fast food restaurants must make food that looks exactly like the picture and exactly what's portrayed in the commercials. I I would love to see that. And then you know what you're going to get with that? You're just going to get crappy pictures and crappy <laughs> commercials. Just going to make some commercial featuring a dilapidated burger where 
You can't see any of the ingredients outside the bun. You know? <laughs> this could happen because the other fast food restaurants are being embroiled in similar lawsuits. McDonald's and Wendy's are defending against a similar lawsuit in the Brooklyn, New York federal court currently. And Taco Bell was sued last month for selling crunch wraps and Mexican pizzas that allegedly contain only half as much filling as advertised. Also, those pizzas aren't Mexican. That's, that's another reason you could sue them, I assume. Well, maybe we'll have a fast food utopia, or maybe it'll just all be crap, guys. You want the, you want the burger to look like the picture? Nah, we're going to put up a new picture <laughs> with a dead tomato. Astronomers are awaiting a response to a message they sent aliens 40 years ago. Japanese astronomers are eagerly awaiting the possibility of a first contact with some intelligent life in the cosmos in response to a message that they transmitted into space about four decades ago. Their optimism stems from the proximity of the star system Altair, which is 16.7 light years away from Earth, making this a plausible time frame for a response from their message. I wonder what the message was that they sent them. Did they send them... Perhaps a song. <laughs> Imagine the aliens just getting the song Twist Again. Let's twist again <laughs> like we did last summer. Now, 40 years later, an entire planet 16 light years away from Earth is twisting the night away. I would love to imagine that. Bunch of twisting aliens coming back to Earth. They want to dance with us. They're all going to show up at prom twisting. And we're going to be like, hey, hey you know, that dance is old, man. That dance is much, is much too old. We're doing new dances now. Don't you have TikTok? What's wrong with you? Get your dance off TikTok and show up at the next prom. It says here, the stargazers have chosen August 22nd, which coincides with the lunar calendar celebration of the July 7th Tanabata Star Festival, where celestial lovers Altair and Vega take center stage to be on standby for potential extraterrestrial messages. So this was over a week ago. I'm going to assume that they didn't get a message because I really don't think aliens give a damn what's going on over here. I know a lot of people think the aliens are into it, but I don't think so. Anybody who does a, a drive-by of what's going on on this planet is going to be like, nah, you know what, I'll, I'll see you guys in a couple centuries and see if you get your act together. <laughs> Nothing good going on down there. We've seen Florida. Okay, now what was the message that the Japanese astronomers sent in 1983? It wasn't anything sophisticated. It was the simple sentence, hello, is anybody there? I wonder what genius came up with this one. Do you think they had a board meeting to decide? <laughs> anybody got any suggestions what this message could be? Uh, yeah, oh, you, you, uh, Peter, what do, what do you have? Yeah, um, any single ladies out there? How about that? That sounds good. Any single ladies? <laughs> no, I don't think so, Peter. I don't think uh, we'll be procreating with another completely different organism. Uh, Charlie, you got something? We got something? Yeah, how about this one? Uh, last call for alcohol. <laughs> just trying to, just trying to keep it light, you know? Just trying to keep it light. Anyways, there's a whole team here, led by Shinya Narasawa. 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 I think I got that right. Shinya Narasawa. Uh, at the University of Hayao. Hmm. Hayogo. 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 It's in the Saku Naga, Nagana, Nagana, Nagano Perfecture. They're hoping uh, they're going to detect some radio signals in response to their message that was sent in 1983. This message, in addition to the sentence, consisted of 13 drawings illustrating the history of life on Earth and the appearance of humans, among other information that was crafted by astronomers Masa. Masaki, Mas, Masaki Morimoto, Morimoto and Hashashi Harabashashashi. Hashashi, Hashashi, Barashashi. Radio signals representing these drawings were transmitted from the U.S. on August 15, 1983, as part of a space theme project commemorating the 15th anniversary of the weekly comic anthology Shonen Jump. I don't know what this is. We got Na Narasara, 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 age 58. This nerd believes that intelligent life beyond Earth must exist somewhere in the universe. Uh, a large number of, he says, a large number of exoplanets have been detected since the 90s. Yeah, but 16 light years away isn't very far, considering the universe is 92 billion light years 
in width. <laughs> it's 92 billion light years. That's the size of it. You're, you're sending a message 16 light years. You think that, that's not really getting anywhere, man. You're not even getting into the center of the universe at this point. You're just barely getting the bleep out there. I mean, I, I don't know. It's as though these people don't really understand the vastness of the universe. 92 billion, bro. You got a message sent out. It took 40 years to go 16 light years. It's 92 billion light years, bro. 40 years to go 16. <laughs> I mean, it's pathetic, these efforts that we're putting out there. You might as well do nothing, bro. Why waste your money? You're getting nowhere with this. You send out, <laughs> and it's radio waves. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, if I highly doubt that they're going to be communicating also in radio waves. That's just me. I, I don't know. It's going to be some real advanced communication if it does happen. It's going to be communication that's so sophisticated. We're not, like, the challenge will be to recognize their form of communication. It could just be thoughts that they're sending us. Thoughts right directly into our brain where we don't even need any instrument to receive it other than our brains. I mean, it could be. I'm just trying to imagine some advanced form of messaging system. It's not going to be the same messaging system that we're sending. Highly doubt that. Anyways, this is just all Earth-centric approaches to what really is a much more advanced problem. You know, These astrologers, I don't know what they're getting paid, but a bunch of dummies, in my opinion, wasting resources. If the aliens have any sense of humor, though, maybe they'll take this message and send us back a recording. You've reached the voicemail of Lord Beckton, ruler of the planet Kuptosi 9 Please leave a message, and I'll get back at ya. Beep! Have you ever wanted to create your own podcast? Well, Spotify's platform lets you easily record and distribute a podcast everywhere, even earn money, all in one place, too, for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. Record and edit on your phone or your computer. Send it to Spotify and everywhere podcasts are heard. They even have video podcasting options as well. Spotify for Podcasters allows you to earn money with ads and subscriptions. Best of all, it's free. Try it. Download Spotify for podcasters or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your life, man. A new study shows that alcohol does not result in beer goggles. It's the sound of science. I don't know what level of science this is. Seems like an odd study. Let's learn a little bit about what they think alcohol does to your brain here. The scientists are saying when it comes to approaching someone that you find attractive at a bar, it may be more a case of alcohol giving you liquid courage rather than beer goggles, according to researchers. I would have loved to have participated in this study. What do I got to do? Just get drunk and approach ladies at the bar? Sign me up for the free alcohol, guys. See you at happy hour, scientists. A new study suggests drinking alcohol makes people more likely to approach someone they already find attractive, but does not make others appear more attractive. I'm not sure if I agree with this. They're saying some people argue intoxication makes others seem better looking, but according to the scientists, this has not been systematically studied. Past research typically had people simply rate others' attractiveness while sober and then rate it again while intoxicated based on these photos. The new study added the possibility of meeting the people being rated. The study was led by Molly Bodring of the Stanford Prevention Research Center and her dissertation advisor, Michael Sayet, and it involved 18 pairs of male friends in their 20s. The men were brought to the laboratory to rate the attractiveness of people that they were presented in photos and videos. They were also told they might be given the chance to interact with one of these people in a future experiment. After the ratings were given, the men were asked to pick those who they would most like to interact with. Pairs of men visited the laboratory on two occasions. On one occasion, they both received alcohol to drink, up to about a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08%, which is the legal limit for driving in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and the U.S. And on the other occasion, they both received a non-alcoholic beverage. Friend pairs entered the lab together in order to mimic social interactions that would typically take place in a real drinking environment. The researchers say they did not find evidence of beer goggles. Whether or not the men were intoxicated had no effect on how good-looking they found other people to be. So they're denying the beer goggle from the alcohol effect. However, according to the findings, 
They say drinking alcohol may affect how people react to those they find attractive in a different way. So I guess what they're saying is uh, if you have two ladies at the bar and I, I have a beer or seven, nine, who's keeping track, uh, 13 beers, I'm, I'm not going to approach the one I find less attractive so much as I'll approach the one that I find more attractive with my stupid pickup line and just faux confidence, I think is what they're saying. Um, the researchers found that it impacted how likely the men were to want to interact with people they already found attractive. They say when drinking, the men, the men were 1.71 times more likely to select one of their top four attractive candidates to potentially meet in a future study compared with when they were sober. The researchers suggest alcohol may not be altering perception, but rather enhancing confidence in these social interactions, giving the men this liquid courage to want to meet those that they found most attractive. So, I mean, they're saying that your inhibitions are reduced after some alcohol, so you're going to take risks. I'm glad they spent a lot of money on this. <laughs> very, very helpful use of community funds, guys. Good job over there. What is science doing? Can anyone answer this question? I'm walking around with a nut allergy. I would like some relief from this. You know, I got chap lips. We can't even cure chap lips, but we're just doing these stupid studies here. <laughs> What a waste. I mean, I can't even take scientists seriously anymore. If I meet a scientist at a party, I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, what are you working on? What kind of uh, hip hop a lobster likes? <laughs> so stupid. And of course, at the end of the day, I, I, I disagree with the findings in this study. I think that you will approach people less attractive to you. I think beer goggles is an actual thing. I have had evidence in my life. I mean, granted, they're just anecdotes from my own personal experiences, but I have most definitely found myself with someone that, you know, ordinarily I wouldn't have been attracted to. The beer goggles were in full effect. And I think other people have the same experience. I don't know. I ask you listeners, call the show 646-450-2012. Do you believe that beer goggles actually exist? I think we have plenty of evidence from our own personal lives to say that this is the case. Call the show. Yay! Bernadette, people are searching for the kind of news that we possess. It's weird news, everybody. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Weird AF News. I hope it was up to your weird standards. And I want to thank everybody who sent me weird stories the past couple days. Very helpful. If you're new to the podcast, just FYI, we do, we do, I do weird news five days a week. And on Friday, it's only weird news from Florida. Please consider subscribing to the podcast, or if you're listening on Spotify, you, you do what's called follow it. Yeah, you can even give me five stars on the Spotify app. It's very easy to do. Just click on the five stars. There's no need to type anything. It's really, really easy and simple, so please help me out with that. If you would like to donate to the show to keep this engine going, you know, it's just a one-man show in a closet here, please consider... Sending me some coffees. You can buy me coffee off my website, weirdafnews.com. It's very, very easy. You can also join the Patreon. It's uh, patreon.com slash weirdafnews or download the Patreon app on your smartphone. Do a search for Weird AF News. It's the only one. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N, by the way. And I appreciate all of your generosity so very much. And I'm going to keep it brief here. Uh, if you'd like to call the show and leave me a voicemail, 646-450-2012. I'll publish the phone calls tomorrow on the Thursday episode. And my email is funnyjones at gmail.com. How about that? Got some shows this weekend in the Southern California area, including tonight in a place called Los Alamitos. I know it sounds like a uh, terrible place, but it's wonderful. Wonderful. A lot of, um, I don't know, empty buildings. I mean, you would love it. You would... <laughs> You love it. If you'd like to do drugs, Los Alamitos is for you. Follow me on the Instagram, at Funny Jones, where I post my upcoming shows. And you can interact with me there. You can even send me a DM and say hello. I always, not always, but I usually respond. Send me stories, too. If you come across some weird stories, I'm always open to that. And I appreciate your uh, participation. Your participation. And, uh, and good luck with your life, my man. <laughs>